hundreds of people still gather daily on Avenue Bourguiba in central Tunis. So that's one of the biggest achievements in our revolution. We have uh, get back the, our rights to dream and our uh, creativity. Yusuf Tlili and the others are enjoying their freedom. But what's next for them? Where does the country stand three months after the revolution and three months before free elections? The people I meet are keen to affect change. I ask if this is a demonstration. This man tells me they're here to talk about the future of Tunisia and policy issues. <laughs> Another says they want a state that's there for the people and not only for itself. This one says they want to make it clear that they will remain here as they did before the ouster of Ben Ali. They've gone onto the street and they're willing to do it again if necessary. They're ready to demonstrate any time and to make their opinions heard. For Yusuf Tlili, this eagerness to protest doesn't go far enough. Unlike most of the people here, he has clear political ideas as to Tunisia's future. Everyone knows him. One of the revolution's chief activists, he's devoted himself to reform. And I have a lot of friends who are involved in uh, local politics and in Tunisian uh, associations, civil society, parties. And we, we discuss, we discuss, we discuss without limits. Youssef is a spokesman for the Students' Union and a member of Etat Jdid. And this is our, our uh, moment. Etage Deed means renewal. The former communists are trying to re-engage. Under Ben Ali, they made up the opposition and parliament. It strikes me that there are only older men at the table. Young people like Youssef are hardly represented. Yet well over two-thirds of Tunisia's population is under 30. Youssef tells me that's the legacy of a dictatorship. Most people don't bother to inform themselves because they think politicians are all opportunists. But they forget that parties are necessary to form a democracy. But this democracy is still in its infancy. The military are ever-present. Riyad Alhami is an activist too. He's just called for a demonstration via Facebook. The social networking site has become the young revolutionary's most crucial communications tool. He says they want to organize a protest event, a sit-in, which is legal. They've informed the authorities and received a permit. The entire thing will take place in a symbolic location. I notice he's using Google Maps. Google Maps Absolutely. Maps On the right, he says, he's marked the exact coordinates so everyone can find the place. That's a modern revolution for you. <laughs> Riyadh is demanding more transparency in politics and an international arrest warrant for Ben Ali. We're on our way to the demonstration, the country's first legal one. But that doesn't mean there won't be problems. Riyadh says if they don't let them into the area, they'll just gather in front of it. If the police are there, the demonstrators will ask whether it's for their own protection. He thinks there's not much risk. The protesters have barely begun to gather when police cars come cruising up. 
Access to the Monument of the Martyrs remains blocked. Riyadh immediately posts everything that's going on, on Facebook and Twitter. Some of the people here were imprisoned under Ben Ali's regime, like Yassin. In spite of the police presence, he stays relaxed, focused on making an internet video. The police begin to back off. The demonstrators tell me the police don't interfere with them these days. The openness of the internet is on their side. People across the world can now follow everything that's going on here minute by minute. Wondering what role traditional media still plays here, I go to the state television station. It's heavily guarded by the military. I have to stay hidden in order to shoot this video. Even with an appointment, I wait almost an hour. That's how things are in Tunisia. Finally, Fatina Hafsia comes to get me. She's a presenter. And the journalists were really those who felt oppressed uh, with the old regime. Uh, but thank God, what we can say is that uh, we really feel free. Let's go downstairs. But later, someone tips me off that in the old days, Fatina Hafsia would have been loyal to the regime. Next up, news and brief. There's a new presenter. The old ones were replaced. And there is more news than before the revolution. But other things remain as they were, including the journalists. An editor tells me they're soon to be given training on how to file independent reports. He tells me some journalists aren't yet familiar with the concept of free journalism. At first, there was complete chaos, but order is gradually returning. The media is one building block of the new democracy, but it seems to me that block is part of a very large construction site. It's Friday afternoon. Security forces are on alert. The call to prayer. Ninety-eight percent of all Tunisians are Muslims. People here have freedom of religious practice as long as public order is not disturbed. But suddenly there's a scuffle. The police move in. They try to break up the prayer gathering, but then they back off. But this is important for our religion. Why is it important to do it in the streets? I don't understand why it's important to do it in the Because they think that we are the terrorists who respect this. We are not terrorists. We are just Muslim people or Tunisian, yes. But you can be Muslim people and nobody uh, wants to stop that, no? Not stop that, but they don't want to, for example, this. It's our democracy. We can't do this everywhere. You think uh, praying in the street is democracy? Yes, it's like that. Yes, Democracy is different things to different people. Tunisia may be a land of dreams, but many are a long way from reality.